So uh, for our last panel of the day, we're going to talk about representing identity through documentary photography. Um, how are participatory projects addressing issues of race and social justice and identity and belonging um, in new ways? And what can those of us who make public media learn from these practices, uh, as well as what are funders doing to support this field? And the film evolved into this, this, uh, this film called Through a Lens Darkly, Black Photographers and the Emergence of a People. And one of the things we realized was that, you know, the um, African American families have not been part of popular culture representationally because uh, most of the people who took photographs of African American uh, families were black photographers and their archives. You know, have been hidden and uh, discarded and ignored. So, um, so I'll show the the clip. Uh, this is a, a a trailer we made for the premiere at Sundance in Berlin, and um, and then go into the transmedia project. There are secrets in every family. Sometimes they're buried deeply, and sometimes. They're right out there in the open, willfully unseen. There is one place where all the secrets reside. In the family photo album. In what it chooses to represent, and in what is absent, hidden. I, with uh, Peter DeCampo, uh, am a co-founder of Everyday Africa, which is a uh, project that uh, uses images taken on an everyday device and uh, uses an everyday device to take images and show them in a way that we hope um, will help dispel some stereotypes um, uh, of life in Africa. Uh, we're trying to show that Africa is more than a place that simply is overwhelmed by starvation and disease or consumed by conflict, or blessed by safaris. What we are trying to do is provide a little bit of context and to show that other things are happening in Africa. So what are, what are our pictures trying to say? We're trying to say that people play music in Africa. They go to work. They rollerblade. They get married, they go to school, they think about fashion, they go to sporting events, they make paintings, they go to the beach, they vote in elections, they do laundry. They play polo. They drink coffee. And they have good ideas. We're a very large global philanthropy. Documentary photography is but one thing that we do. Um, it's our interest in supporting photography is not supporting photography for photography's sake, but because the foundation is so advocacy oriented, it's the role that photography can play in social change. We've supported over 300 photographers, uh, directly or indirectly, over the last 15 or so years. And the slide you see up here is just um, one example of a project um, that we support, which is an exhibition. So again, it began as a campaign to close TAMS. It's this facility um, housed people for uh, 23 hours a day, for months and years at a time. It's a documented form of torture. Um, there were many components to the campaign. One of them was a project that was called Photo Request from Solitary. So the men who were in solitary there could request an image. And then Lori Jo found photographers to take the images. And then the images were returned to the men. With our funding, uh, the project moved to New York, where a pop-up campaign office was opened last September for a couple weeks. And it was lined on the inside with these requests and the letters and the photos. The outside, you can see the outline of the size of the cell and the little circle that you see in the corner. That would be the toilet. 
And in two weeks, they collected 2,800 signatures, which were delivered to the state commissioner for corrections. People were really moved by this. This is these these the the both the requests themselves and the images served to. Um, change the the idea that somehow these people were the quote the worst of the worst they really humanized them and they, the people who saw this really wanted a path towards action so just very quickly the result of all of this was in the TAMS case in Illinois actually the um, the facility was closed in 2013 it was a very long campaign the photos were one ele humanizing element of it and in New York more recently actually policies around solitary confinement have changed